Hey guys, this is Oracle Daphne. My name is Beth and I'm back again doing your mid-October 2015 monthly tarot horoscope. This is for everyone with their ascendant sun or moon in the lovely Pisces. And a card just fell out <laughs> while I was shuffling so I had to, I had to yank it out of there. Um, so yeah, I am back doing um, the regular you know, the tarot using my regular deck um, by Stephanie Puymoon Law. And um, I just started the fan funding, enabled fan funding. So if you'd like to support my channel in a financial way, you're more than welcome to click the fan funding button and donate to my channel that way. Um, I greatly appreciate it. And um, thanks guys so much for um, liking and subscribing and sharing all my videos. Really appreciate that too. Um, if you are a new subscriber, or new to my channel, um, I post videos twice a month, mid-month and at the beginning of the month. So, um, I mean, eventually I'll probably only be doing it once a month <laughs> because I'm busy. But, um, but yeah, if you'd like to, you know, be notified when I'm going to be posting my videos, click the subscribe button because you'll get a notification in your inbox. It is free to subscribe and, um, you know, you'll, that, that way you'll just know um, when I do that. So, um, and then also I am still offering private readings. For those of you who um, haven't had a private reading with me, um, feel free to email me, elizabetholson31 at gmail.com. I charge $75 for one hour uh, and I charge $75 per hour, but I usually schedule the one hour session. I never schedule any sessions that are less than one hour because I talk a lot and because my clients uh, usually elect to continue on to have, uh, ask additional questions actually. So, um, so yeah, and let me real, uh, lay out a spread for you. We'll roll it out here. Okay, so Pisces, um, you did, the card that flew out was the Wish card, okay? And it's very interesting. Mm. What you're wishing for, <laughs> you have the hots for somebody, Pisces. <laughs> you got the Ten of Cups card. It's funny because <laughs> this is also the sex card. So some of you may be really just needing to get it on, okay? Uh, Mid-October, your wish is going to be granted. Um, it may not be, you know, in mid-October where you are um, getting it on with that person. It may be November or even late December. Uh, but your wish is going to be granted in the sense that you're going to eventually get it on with that person, whoever that person is. Whoever you're thinking about now, whatever that is, that person is, that's, that's who you're going to be getting it on with. Um, so yeah, um, this is also somewhat, you know, some of you who may be, you know, dreaming about wealth, you know, and prosperity, that's also a financial card. For the most of you, it's going to be, you have the hots for someone or you're looking for love, you're looking for a real relationship. Some of you are looking for like the, what I call, this is the card that's the whole ball of wax. Love, romance, bliss, happiness, the whole thing. You're looking for the full package. Um, and for you to get your wish on the full package is awesome. So that's really, really good. Um, and I'm really happy for you there. Um, the... So yes, you have that. The wish card was at the center of everything in the heartbeat of the reading. And crossing you is the Queen of Cups. Um, and Queen of Cups is a, uh, this could be you, Pisces, okay? Because you are, in a way, the Queen of Cups, okay? For Pisces females. Um, Pisces guys, this could be a Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer female that's crossing you, okay? Someone that's crossing your path. Maybe you, you know, you've met her or you just met her, or somebody, someone that's in your life, but they're in your, it's like they're, they're right in front of you kind of thing, um, or you're seeing them a lot, um, or you're thinking about them a lot. Um, uh, for some of you, like Pisces guys, this is, uh, again, someone 
who may not be a water sign female at all. She may have some strong water in her chart. She may just be very intuitive, very psychic. Um, this is someone who is like in what I call a state of deep trust with the universe. She's kind of in the flow of the universe. She might like to sing. She might like to dance. She might, you know, she might like to exercise. This is someone who's just like really kind of um, dancing her way through life. Um, She's a, she's a very deep person. Um, she's an, also sometimes an artist. Um, for some of you, it's a Taurus, okay? Uh, a lot of times a Taurus or even Capricorn female comes up. Could even be a Virgo, too, because there's a lot of earth elements here. Um, just as much as there are water in this card. So, um... She kind of has a magical quality about her. There's something about her that's magical. For whatever it is. It, it may be her energy. It may be just when she looks at you. Um, and she's pointing to something. She's pointing in a direction. I feel like the message from her is um, she's going, she's there to kind of help you transition into going like a new direction in your life. Um, it's almost like she's like a sign. She's like a signpost. And it's like if you meet her, since she's crossing you, you may, you literally may be crossing paths um, with her. Um, and you could be her too, where you're kind of at, you're acting like a sign for other people. She's like a sign. So it's like if you've met her, or if you know her, or you've seen her, she's a sign for you, Pisces, that, that you're headed, you're going to be headed in a new direction. Um, and it's a direction that maybe you haven't headed, in, you, you know, you haven't, didn't think about heading, you know, a path you didn't head, in, didn't think about heading down, but, but, um, it's, um, it's a direction. It's about direction. It's about taking direction. She's there to help you, to help kind of guide you, um, through, you know, onto a new path in life. Okay. And it's going to be for the better. I want to say, um, it's going to be filled with a lot of light and a lot of love. Um, the path that you're going to be going down. Um, so take her lead. She's calling. It's like, she's calling to you. Um, again, she has psychic ability. She, she, it's like her signal is very strong. So she may literally, her energy may literally be calling to you. You may be very attracted to her. She may just, she, you may have like magnetic attraction where it's like, you know, I don't know, you bump into her, or you see her or, or, or it's like, she's just literally like always around, um, and really what the message is, is that she's there to, she's there to actually go with you forward in, on your new path together. Um, I feel like this could be a, a new, a potential new romantic partner. Uh, she may not show up as a romantic partner at first, but later I feel like there's definitely potential for romance there. Because she has some strong water elements, and she is the Queen of Cups, she may be very emotional, she may be um, just in tune with her emotions or other people's emotions, she may be what you call like an empath, somebody who's just like really empathetic and understanding and nurturing. Um, even if she's not, uh, even if her sun sign's not a uh, Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer female. So, so this is a very interesting card. Um, we already talked about you having the Ten of Cups crowning you, which is very positive. For the foundation, you have the Justice card. So some of you may be getting a divorce, you may have already filed for divorce, uh, in the distant past, and maybe separated, um, already. Um, the Justice card is, is completing karma, which is good, because that's what Pisces is here to do, really. Pisces is here at the very tail end of the Zodiac to, to kind of clean up the mess, <laughs> to, you know, 
And the Pisces is here to cross all the T's and dot all the I's, which is ironic for Pisces because Pisces, you know, forgets uh, and doesn't really pay attention to those little tiny details. You know, Pisces is living in a dreamland, and so Pisces doesn't, isn't really, isn't detail focused. Now, there was a, a subscriber who really complained and said that, um, you know, she was very organized Pisces. Um, well, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of things that contribute to uh, somebody's chart. So it's not just sun sign Pisces and that's it. You got the sun, you got the moon, you've got Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Uranus, Pluto, North Node, South Node. You got it, you got it all. You got Mercury. So, um, you know, you could have a sun sign in Pisces, but five other planets in Virgo, okay? And if that's the case, yeah, you're going to be crossing all your T's and dotting all your I's and be meticulous and clean and neat and obsessive, compulsive with getting things done. But um, for a lot of those Pisces out there that don't have five planets or, you know, even two or more planets in Virgo um, or anything like that, you know, Pisces generally is lives in this dream world, okay? And that's okay. Um, and uh, I rank on Pisces a lot, but I love Pisces, I do. Um, everybody's different, everybody's unique. Um, so there's nothing wrong with being you, just be you, that's it, that's all you need to do. Um, but the foundation is the justice card. So the justice card a lot of times is divorce, okay? But this is also completing karma, like I said, things ending up fair, okay? Um, I like to see this if you are getting a divorce, if you are planning to separate from your partner. This is where things do work out fair in the end. Now, fair does not mean 50-50, okay? Fair can be 60-40, 70-30, karmic. There's karmic things, elements happening for you, which means you may not get what you want, but you'll get what's fair uh, in the universal term. So keep that in mind. I don't feel like it's necessarily going to be messy divorce um i feel like it's more gonna be uh it's gonna be resolved you know um may take a little bit of effort on your part though um you also have the eight of cups in the recent past which is needing to kind of go deep and be introspective and be you know get in touch with your emotions this is also this is a great place i like to see this for you pisces because this is a great place emotionally Okay, emotionally, you are kind of free from, you know, any kind of troubling times, any kind of troubling emotions. This is a great place. I like the Eight of Cups followed by the Ten of Cups. You've got the Queen of Cups. So there's just a lot of really positive stuff. Mid-October, uh, positive energy for you, Pisces. Um, really, really strong. Uh, just a lot of, there's a lot of intuition, a lot of intuitive things happening. There's a lot of... Um, positive movement as far as you know where your emotions are at where your head is at and it's it's very good time for you um you got the magician in the immediate future uh which is the you know i think of it as like a, a one of the work car cards or career cards um this is us this is someone you know getting a lot done magically things are just happening um this is you following your intuition, following the signs. Um, it's funny that I was just talking about the signs of the Queen of Cups because to me, the the, the magician is uh, a card a lot about following the signs. Um, if your intuition tells you, you say you meet someone just randomly and you feel like they're a liar, chances are they're a liar, okay? Um, if you if you meet someone and you feel like they're fake, they're phony, then they're fake and they're phony. That's it. Um, they're, you know, don't overthink it there because your intuition is right, okay? Uh, for those of you who are dating, this could be a uh, Pisces uh, Capricorn combination, Pisces um, female Capricorn male, and this is a Capricorn male in the immediate future, maybe somebody you haven't met yet, okay? Um... For those of you who have Capricorn in their chart, like say a Capricorn moon and you have your sun in Pisces or you have a Capricorn ascendant and again you have your sun in Pisces, um, this is you working 
you know, being very focused on work, getting a lot done, wanting to get a lot done, having a lot of tasks to do. This is someone who may be, you know, working with their hands. You know, this is the plumber, the electrician. This is the, this is the mixed, mixed or fix it type person. Okay. So this may be you, or this may be someone that's, um, you haven't met yet or someone that's in your life. Um, could be, again, you might have some kind of maintenance issue. This could be the maintenance guy, you know, in your apartment complex, or this could be someone that you hire to come by to fix the fan in your ceiling and you're having an electrical problem there or something like that. Um, for those of you who are dentists, this is the dental card, okay, or someone who works in the dental office. I see this as the dental card. For those of you who live in Connecticut, uh, my, you know, my family has its own dental practice in Connecticut, so it's called Olson Family Dental. If you'd like to check them out, they're on, I think, Yelp. Uh, and if you live in Connecticut and you want to get your teeth cleaned, I'm going to shout out to my family's business uh, right now, So, which I do quite often. Um, so, end of October, you have some very, I want to say neutral cards. They're kind of neutral, okay? Um, in the position of emotions, you have the world's card. Now, you may um, be, uh, you may like or, uh, you know, be in a relationship with or have feelings for or know an Aquarius female, okay? Because the, the Aquarius got the world as the center of their spread. So there's, there's some kind of connection between the Pisces and the Aquarius. You may be a Pisces who has Aquarius in their chart. Um, this is also Pisces guys. You may just like an Aquarius. This is someone who, this is in the position of emotions. So, and Pisces females, this could be you just being very intuitive. You being psychic. You having your own. Pisces are psychic, naturally, okay? So guys and girls, you may have your own intuition, your own psychic ability, um, and you may... Um, like someone who's an Aquarius. Um, so you have that. Now, the world is also, you know, the world is your oyster kind of thing, believing that you can have it all, wanting it all. Um, and this is a very positive place for Pisces to be. Um, I would caution you, though, um, Pisces is a very spiritual sign. They've been through all the other the other experiences in the zodiac. So they, in a way, need to focus more on spirituality and living a very simple spiritual life. For those of you who are very focused on money, my only caution to you would be is you're not I don't feel like you're I don't feel like you're wrong for wanting it. But at the same time, my caution would be, that's not all there is, okay? It's not all about, I mean, this is also a card about happiness and bliss and abundance, true spiritual abundance. So for some of you, you are in a very high spiritual place and you appreciate the little things in life and you, you don't really care too much about material things. But then there's other Pisces that care too much about the material, not enough about the spiritual. So I would encourage you to find the balance between those two things. Um, now, okay, again, some neutral cards that are coming up. You've got the Six of Pentacles, which is what's coming in from the outside. And this can indicate spending a lot of money um, or supporting someone financially and there's resentment in your relationship. Okay, this is where, you know, if you're married, you know, you could be married and um, your partner doesn't appreciate what you do. Um, you may be putting in your all, everything goes into the pot, and they don't appreciate a damn thing, you know. Um, they may be taking all of your money. You may be taking all of their money. It can go both ways, okay. There's a financial element here where it's just a feeling of resentment. I call this a resentment card because... One person feels like they're doing a lot and the other person feels like they're not doing enough. And then what, that person that feels like they're not doing enough will push and push and push and ask for more and more and more and more. 
because that's the way the universe works. And, you know, you or your partner may feel like burnt out of it, resentful, because it's like you are putting in everything that you can put in. You can't really, you don't see how you can put in more, okay? Um, they see ways that you can put in more, but you feel like you're at your limit, um, which is saying a lot for Pisces because I feel like Pis Pisces don't really know boundaries. Um, but also, Pisces are very sensitive, so Pisces take it offense if they feel like they've reached their boundaries and limits when somebody asks for more. Because Pisces is like, well, don't you see? I'm giving you all of this. Um, so... The, the counsel here is to do what I call tweaking. You gotta kind of tweak it, okay? Um, little things that can improve the situation. So the person that feels like they're putting in a lot, they need to put in a tiny bit more. Um, and the person that feels like uh, they're not putting in enough, they have to ask for a little bit less. Um, and it's like a little bit, not a lot, it's a little bit. And they need to come to a point where they have to be on the same page. The problem with a lot of men and women is that they get into a partnership and someone's making more money than the other person. But the person that make, is making less money still may be putting in everything that they are making. So they feel like they're putting whatever they can into the pot. There is nothing more that they can do. Uh, and that person that's making more money is like, well, you've got to find a way to put more money in because we're still short. Or that person that's making all the making more money feels like they're putting everything in, and they're still you guys are still short. And so this is where, this is where you know talking to a financial advisor. This is where being on the same page and understanding and respecting that even if somebody makes you know less or more money you have to kind of have a good financial talk about where each of you are at so there isn't any resentment. Now, there are couples that, um, where, you know, there's a sole breadwinner, okay? And I see a lot of times the sole breadwinner may be the male, okay? And the female goes out and spends all that male's money. Well, of course, there's gonna be resentment there. Why? Because the female is not putting anything into the pot and the male is like, well, I'm putting everything into the pot and you're spending all my money. There's a lot of issues that go on with this. This can I can talk about this for a long time, okay? And it's not just males, males being the sole breadwinner. It could be a female Pisces. You know, you may be like a Pisces male and your partner or your spouse, you know, girlfriend or boyfriend might make more money than you and they may be the sole breadwinner and for whatever reason they're putting everything in and you're spending their money and there's resentment there. It goes both ways. It's not just a male thing. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just sort of, it's having a good uh, understanding of where each person is at. And if there's resentment, there's resentment usually for a reason. Um, everybody has a different perspective on money and what they're willing to put into the pot. In my opinion, if you are married, then there is no, it's mine uh, versus, it's not mine versus yours, it's ours, okay? So there should be an agreement, there should be debit cards, there should be some kind of mutual understanding and discussion about where the money is going, how it's being spent. Um, and, you know, it's better to be, to be open about it, you know, um, and have a good discussion about it. Um, obviously, if you're supporting someone who's not working, um, there's also going to be resentment there as well. Um, but if your partner's working and they just make less money than you do, or you make, make less money than they do, there shouldn't be resentment there because you're working and you're doing the best you can. Um, but again, this is where things get tricky in relationships because resentment forms when there's not a good, um, you know, you're not on the same page. You're not, there's no good discussion. Um, there's no examining, okay, well, where's this money going to go? This is what our budget is, and, and yada, yada. There is, there is no discussion. Um, and some people, they don't know where their money is going. They just spend it. They see it's there, and so they spend it. And so they never really get ahead because they don't know where their money is going, and they don't plan. Pisces, a little, I always say this to you, and I will tell you this again, a little 
planning goes a long way okay we're talking serious like just writing it down on a piece of paper and sticking it somewhere in a book somewhere and saying okay I plan to spend this on this day and this is what I'm gonna you know this is the, this is what's what I'm making and this is what's going out this is what's coming in have a little plan get a little book that that's showing you know what what you're spending what you're making um, and you know if your partner is making more and you are married then you're going to need to get on the same financial page and uh, usually this is a card about someone being selfish but it's it's not it's not selfish necessarily in a bad way this is just someone who um, wants more or someone who sees it differently so like if you're in a relationship with someone and they're making more than you um, but they don't want to they don't want to put they don't want you to be spending their money then it's going to be very difficult to to move forward if they see it as mine versus yours it needs to be ours it needs to be you know that word ours for 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 the both of you um, you know, especially if you have a family, um, you know, especially if there's kids, or there's other people that are, that you're, you know, providing for. Uh, there's also, you know, you asking for a raise, and there's also, um, again, just planning. So, enough about that. The last two cards are, you got the Hermit card, and you got the King of Swords. So it's kind of a sort of strange um, situation because the hermit is you needing to go out of the cave, you know, or to think deeply, to process things. Some of you need to go into the cave and and really, you know, think things through, take time off, R&R, &R, and some of you need to go out of the cave. Some of you are thinking about moving. Um, this is also you getting engaged to somebody. For some of you who... Um, you know, aren't, you know, in a partnership and you're dating someone or you're getting to know someone, this is you getting engaged, okay? Um, or the potential to get engaged or, or asking somebody to marry you. This is that, this is that point in time. Um, I feel like for a lot of you, you're in relationships already. Um, for those of you who are single, um, going back to the Six of Pentacles card may just be you running out of money or not having money, okay? There are issues. Um, this is also any kind of legal settlement um, for some of you who have legal stuff going on. This is, you know, wanting to to or you know, have, getting a legal settlement of some kind. Um, if you've been, you know, you have a divorce here. This is when the settlement comes through, and you finally end up getting the the money. Um, so that may be happening in October. At least that's the energy that's you know there. Um, it may not be come to fruition until later, but at least that's what's there. The way I see it is, the way the tarot works and the way time works is that it's almost like when cards show up in a certain way, it's like if there's any kind of delay, it's like it moves. So that's why the cards change, because it's like the whole thing moves. But it doesn't mean that energy wasn't present to begin with. It's almost like a domino effect. When the cards show up a certain way, it's like a, to me it's a domino effect. So, um, you know, to me, this is like the natural process. You have the justice card, file the divorce, and then later, you know, you have the six of pentacles, which is settlement, okay? Um, but again, this is also, the six of pentacles is also resentment, um, needing to be in an equal partnership, needing to be on the same page as your partner financially, or at least under, have a good financial understanding of where you're at, um, if you're all in, they need to be all in, and that's the bottom line. If they're not all in, then you have a problem because it's mine versus ours, and there's going to be resentment. And if you if your partner is making more than you and you're spending their money, there's they're going to you know act all high and mighty, and then it's going to make you feel bad about what you're making. You know, it's not a good feeling. So that's kind of how I see it. Um, and so the King of Swords is the outcome is a deceased loved one who's around you in spirit. Um, I like it when the King of Swords crowns the reading because it literally means 
someone is, the outcome is, you don't have to worry because you're, because you are being looked down on by heaven. Okay, you're being wa watched and looked out for by someone who's around you in spirit, and they're looking out for your your highest good. So you're you're not alone. For those of you who feel, you know, you know, you know, just not in the greatest place or the greatest situation, you're not alone because they're you know. Your deceased loved ones are around you. Usually it's a male figure. It can be a father figure, a grandfather, um, great, 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 great grandfather. <laughs> um, but someone who really cares about you and someone who's looking out for you. So so really, if there's anything that I want to say, if there's anything that you feel like is like an impossible situation, you feel like you can't overcome it for whatever is a challenge that's, that's driving you mad, that's driving you crazy, give it up to... God, give it up to heaven and say, you know what, heaven, I can't deal with this right now. I'm giving up to you. Um, I ask that you take over and that you fix this because I can't, you know, or, you know, again, it's a guide thing. It's, you need to follow the signs. Um, again, the people that you meet right now, the people that are in your life right now are acting as guides for you. So they're there. <laughs> Uh, I used to joke, I used to joke with, um, I, I used to live with this little, this little girl and she'd always be like, you know, where did you come from? And I always used to say, God sent me. That's what I always used to say. Why are you here? She'd say, I said, well, because God sent me. That's what I'd always say. So the people in your life are there because God sent them to be there for you. And so you need to realize they're there to be the light for you, to shine that light, to help you find your way again, to help you find the direction that you need to go in and to kind of point you in the right direction. Uh, so don't take anybody for granted that's around you. You know, not friends, um, not even family, especially females, any female people in your family, your mom, your sister, your cousin, your aunt, you know, um, these females are there to really guide you on, on your way. So. Um, just remember that. Um, yeah. So that's it for right now. Um, this video is a little bit long again, so I'm going to leave you for now. And um, I'll be back again for your uh, November 2015 tarot horoscopes um, right around the first of the month. So um, if you'd like a private reading, again, feel free to email me, elizabetholson31 at gmail.com. Okay. I'll talk to you guys soon. Send you big hugs. Big hugs. Big kisses. All right, take care.